the La Brea Tar Pits. They're in LA, off Wilshire Boulevard. Crazy place for such an awesome archaeological site. It was a fascinating place. Not very big, but boy, do they have a lot of fossils. We're going to talk about La Brea Tar Pits, and we're going to talk about a science news article where they are discussing the La Brea Tar Pits. I want to go back. It would be nice. By about 11,700 years ago, most large land mammals outside of Africa had gone extinct. Scientists have long debated whether these extinctions were primarily driven by human activities or a changing climate as the last ice age came to a close. I'm kind of thinking it was neither one. What do you think? Well, it may have had to do with ice and changing climate, but probably not the way that they're looking at it. That's what I mean. It's creation versus evolution. It depends on your worldview, how you look at the evidence. A new study of the remains of animals trapped long ago in the La Brea Tar Pits in what's now Los Angeles suggest both factors worked in concert to bring about the demise of the region's megafauna. A warming, drying climate, well, that would be warmer and drier after the flood, wouldn't it? It'd be drying out. It would. We need to do some drying out around here. It's been <laughs> raining so much. A warming, drying climate, plus humans hunting and burning of the landscape, led to fires that precipitated die-offs there around 13,000 years ago and forever changed the ecosystem, researchers report. And how do they know that? The evidence. Oh, I thought maybe somebody left a note. No one left a note about the time frame. But God did. He left a note about the time frame. Absolutely. And it was not 13,000 years ago. No, because there wasn't 13,000 years ago. And this is what we point out many, many times in our videos, that the evidence is the evidence. And a lot of times evolutionists will come up with a scenario, and it sounds much like what happened at the flood. It's just when they throw in their time scale to be in sync with what their evolutionary mindset is and scenario, they have to add a couple of zeros often. Well, that's for sure. Out there at the La Brea Tar Pits, it is a relatively small area but they have found millions of fossils in there. Yeah, it's hard to believe it was... I didn't know what I was going to be seeing. I didn't see what I expected. I'm not even sure what I was expecting, but I'm certainly glad we went. I'd heard about it for decades and decades and was excited to get there. And one of the features that they talked about in the fossils were these dire wolves. I wasn't familiar with those either, so that was a great thing to learn about. Well, they actually have mounted over 400 skulls, but they have found... 1,600 at the time we were there. That's an amazing amount when you think about it. I guess it was much like the uh, the old days TV shows when we were kids with quicksand in so many of them. Once you get in there, you can't get out. Right. They got stuck in the goop. And they have actually found some really large animals, which again would explain this was all done at the time of the flood. And before the flood, things were much bigger. Yes, that was another great aspect. This one sign we got a picture of, Pit 91. I mean, they have multiple pits out there of these animals. They've found numerous kinds of animals all in the same areas. What are some of those animals that they have found? They found camels, horses, bison, wolf, bear. And it's been a few years since we were there, but it's cool that we actually were there. Many people do demonstrations and talk about places and they haven't been able to go. And we have been able to travel so much and see these places firsthand, like the La Brea Tar Pits. Have you subscribed yet? If not, please subscribe. But back to the fossil displays. They also have some mammoth. Mammoth and camel are not supposed to be together, according to evolution. It says here, deep down, deep pit yields mammoth find. Pit 9 was far bigger than it now appears. Workers dug down 35 feet to find all its fossils. They pulled over 10,000 fossils from this one pit, including bones from 27 individual Colombian mammoths. That's incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just to fathom that. And I realize that if you have a lot of animals, that number of bones can add up fast, especially if they're talking about each individual little bone. But still, that is an incredible amount of work also on their part to clean and pull out and identify all those fossils. And they haven't got any all of them yet. Well, no, they probably never will. No. The type of climate-human synergy implicated in the demise of some of California's biggest ancient mammals may warn of dramatic upheaval in modern ecosystems that are subjected to human-caused climate change, the scientists say. I know I was reading that and may not have 
heard it correctly, even though I was reading it. I would assume that they're saying that there weren't people during this time frame, or very many, yet this happened and this weather problem occurred, climate change occurred, but today we're going to create the same thing? Well, that's... They didn't have cars? No, the cause and effect is not the same. It can't be the same. They can't be blaming us for this to happen when whatever event caused that, which we know was the flood, whatever they think it is, it doesn't have anything to do with humans. But look at the next sentence. Over the last century, Southern California has warmed more than two degrees Celsius on average. That's a far more rapid change than the area faced during the end of the last ice age. That is so ridiculous. I don't know about you guys, but if you watch the weather and you look for the forecast, and then you look maybe hours later or certainly the next day, it's all changed, and they're going to tell us what the temperature change occurred during the last ice age? 13,000 years ago. I don't think so. Also notice two degrees. Now, we tend to be warming as an Earth, and that's true, but it's not much. But even at that, two degrees of temperature change killed all these animals? That doesn't make any sense. We've got 35 degree temperature change between morning and afternoon here. Well, it just doesn't make sense, but it is part of their scenario. They are always pushing the climate change scenario and blaming people. What's more, the changing climate and human activities, that's what I just said, what's more, the changing climate and human activities transformed the region's woodlands into chaparral scrubland. Two degrees will do that. There were people chasing mammoths around. (laughs) Didn't you see Ice Age? Manny and all that? Yeah. Okay, so there were humans. It's a vicious feedback loop. They were there to film it and document it. I don't think that if we could stop it then, we're probably going to stop that now. No. Hunting herbivores makes the ecosystem more fire-prone as plants go uneaten. No, it's because (laughs) the people won't clean out the forest lands or they won't stop wildfires when they can. You add more people and it gets hotter and drier and you're killing more herbivores. So there's more fuel to burn. This lady in this picture, she's got a fun job. I know it's all evolutionary based, but it's still cool to go to these places and to see their hands-on work. Oh, yeah, to see the process is amazing. This place, they had all this stuff cataloged in drawers. It's a tremendous amount of of work. work. And it is fun. I'm sure it could get a little tiring. The seven extinct megafauna species vanished from Southern California about 1,000 years before they did elsewhere in North America. Why would you want to leave SoCal? (laughs) I wouldn't. Well, I mean, maybe for some reasons, but those other populations may have met a similar end, the scientists say. There is evidence for a continent-wide event, not just in Southern California, but across the continent right about at the same time. Didn't they just say it was 1,000 years earlier and Mm -hmm. then now it was about the same time but in their time frames when they're talking all these ages and times i guess the thousand years is not all that much paleo ecologist sandra bruger of the university of basel in switzerland notes that similar rapid ecological transformations have been documented in the mediterranean and a broader swath of the u.s west at the end of the last ice age well of course it was a worldwide flood. It was a worldwide catastrophe. It was a worldwide event. Scientific American did an article a few years ago that uh, was talking about Charles Darwin. It's written from a perspective that Darwin is doing the talking here. He goes on to talk about how he was with Captain Fitzroy and they left on this voyage and his teacher had given him a copy of Lyell's book. But what's interesting is it says in the article, I looked at it through the eyes of Charles Lyell because the teacher had given a book. Can you give us an example of that because I feel that he sees that these volcanoes would go off and he would see the effect or the effect of volcanoes, the effect of earthquakes, flooding, and then that would prove to him that it happened over a period of time, which we as Bible believers believe that it occurred on a massive scale across the entire earth at the time of Noah's flood. And yes, there are individual things that occur and situations like Mount St. Helens where the Toodle River Canyon was formed rapidly. But what it shows is that something can be on a smaller scale and on a larger scale. And I know that you wanted to give another example of how we can relate to that. Right here in New Hampshire, where we have a little cabin, the roads here are dirt roads. We had a lot of rain a few weeks ago. Massive carving took place and much of the roads are impassable. That does not mean that same two inches of rain 600 million years ago lasted for a million years and killed everything off. It makes no sense to say, because we see something today, therefore 
extended massive amounts of the same thing happened in the past. It doesn't add up that way. Well, in this, it also says it was not by the hand of the divine or by some catechisms, but by slow, steady processes. That's the whole point right there. He wants to make it a slow process, but we are of the belief that it occurred rapidly on a grand scale, most of it. But again, like Mount St. Helens, things can happen on an individual basis. But I wanted to comment about, look at it through the eyes of Charles Lyell. I had a friend of mine the other day. She was, she lived out in Colorado and now lives in New England. And that's quite a difference. And she knows that I like the desert. And she started listening to some of my videos. And she said, I hear, you know, how much you like the desert. When I went back to Colorado with my family earlier this summer, I looked at it through your eyes and I enjoyed it so much better. When I lived there, I just thought it was hot and dry and the desert, I didn't like it. But this time... I looked at it through your eyes. So that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. We are all influenced that same principle happens. by people. And it's not something weird that Lyle influenced Darwin and he looked at it through his eyes. That's why it's so critical, the information that you take in. Now that she goes to the Garden of the Gods or different places in Colorado and sees it through my eyes, she's enjoying it and it's better. I'm not influencing her in a negative way. We have to be careful of what the influences are in our life. Absolutely. Please leave a comment below and hit that like button until next time if you ever get a chance to go to la there's so much to do including the la brea tar pits off wilshire boulevard of all places thank you